Is this thing on? <laughs> I can't tell. Can y'all hear me okay? There is a green light. Thank you, Gilbert. Gilbert, thank you for those songs. I got to take a breath. That sounded wonderful from where I was sitting. Great uh, way to lead into the sermon today. A couple little side notes. You know, today's date is 1 2 3 1 2 3. Think about that. It's a good thing to be here, it's a good thing to come together to worship our God in spirit and in truth. My lesson is simple. But it's something I hope we can all pause and and think about our life as a child of God. And if you're not a child of God, maybe something might be said or done that might cause you to be baptized for the remission of your sins. This could be the day the Lord comes on 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. We never know, do we? He's going to come as a thief in the night. Simple title, simple words, simple scriptures for the simple-minded man preaching to you this morning. The joy of assembling with the saints. We come every first day of the week to assemble, to be with each other. Talk about David, a man after God's own heart. He serves as a great example. Even though he faltered from time to time, he was still found faithful in God's eyes and a man after God's own height, own, uh, own life. Psalms 122 once says, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates. We're ready. Were you ready to come today to worship God? That's why we're here. We're here to sing. We're here to pray. We're here to give. We're here to take the Lord's Supper. And to hear someone preach for us. Do we recognize that as we are here today, that not only are we commanded to be here, but what a privilege it is to be here When you look at the world today and some of the situations and the fighting that's going on in this world, and we have this freedom, this opportunity right here, right now, to sit down in this comfortable building to worship our God without fear. That is a blessing, that is a privilege, and really folks, it's a commandment, isn't it, to come here and be here today. Like I say, these verses aren't new to most of us it might be new to some of us but when you hear hebrews 10 chapter 24 and 25 what do you get out of that let us consider one another in order to stir up love in our good works if you weren't here this morning you missed a great lesson on matthew chapter 25 in doing what working Working. You missed it. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Uh, Some of you are. That's what it says. This is what the scripture says back then and today. But exhort one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day would that be, brethren? He will come as a thief in the night. We've got to be ready. We will all be judged according to our works. It is a great privilege to be here. We're needed to be here. It's a commandment to be here. We should look forward to the opportunity of coming here every first day of the week. We sang some wonderful songs. We participated in prayer. We're going to give of our means in a little bit. We're going to learn about God and His creation. When we come together to worship our God... We're honoring Him for everything He's done for us. It should help us to find great joy in our hearts when we begin to count all the blessings that we have. I'm reminded all the time, 
Keith, we are so blessed. We have so many things. We have good health, good family, and if you will, good church family to come to worship, to be with, to grow with, to learn with. The more we assemble with the saints, whether it's the first day of the week or for Bible study or for any other gathering, it should and it will make us stronger. I, I'm going to say this, and, and I want to encourage everybody, everybody, to come on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. It would be a wonderful thing to see this amount of people at 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock to study, to grow, to do. I recognize and I know, and a lot of us do, that sometimes we're hindered, we can't go, we can't do it. But I do know for a fact that several of us, if not all of us, have purpose in our heart to come here today and to worship God. Isn't that right? Can we not do the same thing when we talk about studying the Bible? To come together on a Wednesday night at 7 o'clock? On a Sunday morning at 9 o'clock? Or wherever you are. I'm not just pointing us. It, it happens everywhere. But it's a wonderful thing to see all of us here this morning. A good number of us to sing and to pray. I probably beat that to death. But it's something to think about. Along that same line, let me get... Let me get everything straight in my notes here. 1 Corinthians 12, 20. But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. We understand there's one body in the church, right? We're the body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need for you. What is the point of these verses? Chapter, uh, verse 26, And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. For if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. We are a family working together. We are a head. My hands can't work without my head. And on it goes. We need each other all the time. I gain, I gain a lot of strength and confidence in my daily walk when I come and I'm with you for a short period of time every week. Okay, where am I here? Talk about singing for a minute. These are just the acts of worship that we should be familiar with as we're going down this lesson. Like I say, it's nothing profound or nothing new. In Ephesians 5.18, Don't be drunk with wine and which is dissipation. But be filled with, uh, be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and make a melody in your heart to the Lord. And after singing those songs this morning, I was ready to jump up and get to preach it. That was great. I wish I could sing like that all the time. But I recognize now as the older we all get, that sometimes my voice just doesn't hang like it used to be. Do you think God, Jesus, even the Holy Spirit matters if you've got a good singing voice or a tone deaf voice when you're singing to God? Do you realize that as a song leader or a preacher of sermoner that we get to look out and see everybody's faces? And we get to see those that are singing with the Spirit and with the understanding. And we get to see those that are listening to those that have put together songs. And to those that put together a lesson. The interest that you may be showing. And sometimes, brethren, the interest, interest that you may not be showing. It happens to all of us. I got it. I can beat that to death. We're all human. 
But we're here to do the best that we can with what we've got. Singing and making a melody in your heart is one way that we can all join in and worship God in spirit and in truth. Whether it's flat noted or you've got a great voice like many, many of you do. Hmm. What about prayer? Fervent prayer of a righteous man, it does a lot of good, doesn't it? Pray in the closet. Pray at night before you go to bed. Pray in the morning before you come. Pray in the morning before you go to work. Pray in the evening. Pray all the time. Sounds like a song, doesn't it? Seth stood up just a while ago and said a prayer in front of us. And thank you for that. It is hard to stand before a group of people and to pray fervently. I find it so sometimes. To find the right words. To say the right thing. To be meaningful. To be heartfelt. Do you feel like that sometimes? But we do it because we need to. It helps us grow. It helps us do. A fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Talk about preaching for a minute. Mark 16, 15 and 16, but 15. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's kind of why I'm up here right now, isn't it? Preaching the Word. And I thought of another verse as we were sitting down there a while ago. 2 Timothy 4.2 As Timothy was being challenged or admonished or edified, however you want to say it, by Paul. Preach the Word. Be instant when? In season? Out of season? What are you supposed to do when you're preaching, Timothy? You're supposed to reprove. Sometimes rebuke. Exhort. But with what? Long-suffering and the doctrine. It's not me saying these words. I'm just trying to do the best I can with what I got. But he was challenged, young Timothy, to preach, to be in season and out of season. You recognize that when Peter taught, Paul, our Lord and Savior taught, they all got pretty much trouble, didn't they? For what? Preaching the truth? Our Savior died for that reason. Paul cast into prison. Peter cast out of town. It happens when we preach the truth. The truth will fall upon good and honest hearts if we do our best. Along that same along that same line, as we're sitting and when I'm sitting there, most of the time, am I concentrating? Am I listening? Where is my mind? Where is my purpose? What am I doing while Michael is up here preaching? Or Nolan is down here teaching. Or Gilbert from time to time up here teaching. Where is my thought process? Am I paying attention? Am I learning? We have a grave responsibility to listen. To be good examples. Time to focus. How many times have you heard this? This isn't the time for you to think about where we're going to eat. This isn't the time... Are the Dallas Cowboys going to win? Nothing like that. This is the time to focus. To be built up. To do those things commanded of us. Let me get caught up here. Talk about the Lord's Supper. Do we recognize why we are here for the Lord's Supper? What it represents? 
that what our Christ went through, what our Savior went through, here in just a moment, there's going to be some men standing up. I'm going to say a prayer or two about the unleavened bread and the fruit of the vine. Do we recognize what that represents to each and every one of us? That His body was torn apart. That His blood was shed, dripping on the ground. How horrific that must have been to have a mother watching His Son hanging on the cross. Do we recognize the seriousness of this act of worship? 1 Corinthians 11.23 For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which He was betrayed, He took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this to remember me. In the same matter, He also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink. In remembrance of me. For as often as you drink this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. How often do we do it? First day of every week. To be mindful, to have memories of what we are doing. It is a very serious, serious matter. Something also, act of worship. Well, the first day of the week, let each of you lay something aside. Storing up as many as prosper, that there be no collections when I come. Peter talking, I mean Paul. We have purpose to come today. We have uh, purpose to sing, to pray, to take the Lord's Supper. We purposed to give. That's somehow the kind of the tangible thing that we can experience. Oh, we got to do something that affects our lifestyle. You ever think about that? Have you purpose to give today with a cheerful heart? Is it wrong for me to say that God doesn't want it if you don't do it cheerfully? He wants you to give it because you want to. A cheerful heart. 2 Corinthians, is it up here? 2 Corinthians, he says, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. <laughs> so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. God loves who? The happy, I'm glad to do it. Happy that we can do that one little act. My last point is to help us grow spiritually as we're here, as we're doing these acts of worship today. Second Peter 3.18 Grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord and our Savior Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and forever. We're here to give Him the glory. Give Him the honor. Recognizing the seriousness of what we are doing today. That we are involved in something. That we appreciate what we're doing. That we're doing the right thing. That we've made opportunity. We've made time. We have the ability to come here to worship God. A side note. When I come, I like to visit with people. I like to catch up on news. I like to cut up with the kids a little bit when I can. They are our future. Did you know that? The children are our future. But I like being here. I want to be here. I purpose to be here. I think we all do. Let's just do the best we can. 
1 Timothy 4 8. Bodily exercise doesn't do much profit. Godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of life that is that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. Yeah, we need to exercise. Yes. We need to exercise our spiritual body more than anything to be here, to grow in spirit and in truth. And finally, with this last again, we kind of started with this. Psalms 122.1. Let us go into the house of the Lord. I recognize it's just a building to come to. But it's important for us to be here. If you would, go ahead and get your song books out. Get ready for the closing song. Or song of invitation. Okay, let's pause for a moment, stop and think. Why are we here? Are we doing it right? Is my heart right? Is my attitude right? Can I come here with a glad, full heart, a smile, recognizing that we are Preciously blessed beyond measure. This is a time for each and of us, each and every one of us, to stop and think. Those of us who have been baptized have had our sins removed, but we're falling short somehow. And you feel you might need prayer from the brethren. This might be a time to do that, to come forward and ask for help. If you're not a child of God, you're at the age of accountability. You've heard sermons, you hear this sermon. That you need to be baptized for the remission of your sins. And to continue to grow as a child of God. You won't have all knowledge when you're first baptized. That's okay. But it is a step to salvation. If there's any reason why you need to come, would you come now as we stand and sing?